Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was going to go over a study guide uh, for chapter 11 of the Greater Los Angeles Electrical Workers. Uh, it's a union test, it's an aptitude test, it's sponsored by IBU, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and this is an example or a sample test that they put out to help you prepare to take that entry exam to get started in the electrical union. I'm just gonna work through this test. I won't make the video too long. What I'd highly recommend you do is you have a notebook, paper, and pencil in front of you. You take notes, and then you do the problems before I do them. Pause the video, do the problems, and then watch how I do them. There are some tips and tricks, and also I'll just review a lot of um, basic math ideas that you might have forgotten. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started right here. Number one right here, really basic, add those two numbers together. Um, you gotta line them up correctly, so the 49, the nine and the five line up. Nine and five is 14, carry the one. Seven and four is 11, plus that one is 12, so your answer is 124. All right, add these numbers together here. Same thing, you gotta line up that decimal place, so you have 51, 75 plus 172, 50, plus 39. There's no decimal point, so it's right there, zero, zero. And then 854, 854, and finally nine cents. There's gonna be a little bit of a trick here. Uh, so I'm gonna add this up first, five plus four is nine. Nine and nine is 18 carry the one. I'm gonna look over here and see how many of these end in eight. So there are two of them that end in eight, but I won't have to go much further than that. There's one's 78 and one's 88. One and the seven is eight. Eight and five is 13, plus another five is 18. Carry the one, there's a decimal place. I could keep going if I want, and if I have a lot of extra time, I might do that, but there's only one answer here that ends in an 88. And that's answer 2D right there. So that's your correct answer. Next two are subtraction. Um, here we're gonna have to do some borrowing. Uh, you wanna mark up the paper as much as you can for two reasons. One, it prevents careless mistakes. And the second is if you have time left over at the end, you can go back and check your work. You don't have to start the problem all over again. All your work will be right there in front of you. So seven minus eight, I can't do that. So I have to borrow 10 from here. So that nine becomes an eight and that makes that a 17. 17 minus eight is nine. Eight minus four is four. Six minus seven, I can't do that, so I have to borrow a six or a 10 out of there to make from seven to six, giving me 16. 16 minus seven is nine. There's my comma. Six minus nine, I can't do that. I'm gonna have to borrow from there to make that a four, and this is 16. 16 minus nine is seven. And then four minus zero is four. So there's my correct answer right there, 47, 949. And just a quick check, you know, it's pretty close to 48,000. This is pretty close to 10,000. 48 and 10 should be about 58. And there it is right there. So I'm in, I can see that's the correct answer. Okay, number four here, subtract this amount from this amount. What that means is I have 158106 minus this amount, again, really keeping track where my decimal place goes. So the 59 is right here under the 06, and I have 987. Again, I'm gonna to have to do some borrowing here. There's no where to borrow from here, so I'm gonna actually borrow from this, make this a zero, I'm gonna make this a 10. That has the same value then from this 10. I'm gonna borrow one from here, make it a nine, and make this a 16. So then I have 16 minus nine, seven. Nine minus five, four. Decimal place lines up. All these answers have 47, so I'm gonna have to keep going. Zero minus seven, I can't do that. I gotta borrow from this. Turns it into a seven. Makes out a 10. 10 minus seven is a three. Again, I'm gonna have to borrow from here, giving me 17. 17 minus eight is nine. Again, I can't do four minus nine. I could borrow from here, which is gonna give me 14, or I could just see that's 14. 14 minus nine is five. And my correct answer is 593.47. 47. 
And you can see on this one, you really had to go to the last place because there was 693.47 there. So if you had only gone to those places, you wouldn't have got it right. Number five, add this number and this number together. 7207 plus 3154. Keeping my decimal place lined up. 7 and 4, 11. Carry the 1. 1 and 5, 6. Decimal place. 2 and 1, 3. Hate it when this pencil don't work right. 3. 7 and 3, 10. So I got 10361. Then from that 10361, subtract 2575. So subtract 2575 from this number. Again, it's really checking number sense, decimal, place, um, and borrowing. 1 minus 5, I can't do that, so I'm going to borrow 10 from here, making this a 5. This is an 11. 11 minus 5 is 6. 5 minus 7, can't do that. Got to borrow from here. 15 minus 7 is an 8. There's my decimal place. Let me check my answers. There's only 186, so it has to be answer A. Well, let's keep going. Um, this 10, I'm going to borrow down, make it a 9, make that a 12. 12 minus 5 is a 7. 9 minus 2 is a 7, and I see it's 7786. Again, if I had just gone this far, there's only one answer with that. I could have stopped with answer A. Okay, multiplication. 8 times 6 is 48. Now I'm carrying that 10 up here. And I'm going to add that in. 8 times 3, 24. And then I add that 4 to it. So 24 and 4 is 28. So the product is 288. Product means multiply them together. Correct answer is 6C. And then I here, number 7, I have 312.77. Multiply that by 0.04. And round to the nearest hundredths place. So I'm going to multiply this down, and then when I'm all done multiplying, I'm going to count over four decimal places. So I got 4 times 7, 28. Carry the 2, 28, 29, 30. Carry the 3, 4 times 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. Carry the 1, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1, 5. 4 times 3 is 12. Then I got a placeholder here. Zero times anything is going to be zero all the way across, right? And then I'm going to add those together, and that's going to give me one, two, five, one, zero, eight. My decimal place is over one, two, three, four. So I start right here and I go one, two, three, four, and I get 12.5108. And then it says round to the nearest hundredths place. This is my tens place, and this is my hundredths place. So I'm going to round to this place here. Zero is going to keep it at 51, so I drop those off, and I get 12.51. Answer A right here. Okay, number A, divide. So 5 and a 455. I'm going to give us a little more room here. So 5 goes into 45 nine times to give me 45. Then I subtract here. 5 minus 5 is 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. Bring down that 5. 5 goes into 5 one time, and my answer is 91. Answer 8C. Number 9 is a little different. you got to set it up. It's saying 795 divided by 0.15, right? So that means 795 divided by like a tenth. So it's going to be a really big number, right? You're going to We'll see, but it's clearly not going to be the first two. Um, so what I'm saying is 795 divided by 0.15. And then how I do these decimal places here is I move it over 1, 2. And here I move it over 1, 2. So my decimal place is going to go there and then go straight up there. 15 goes into 79 five times. Now that I'm there, I know I'm going to have another place here. I can see my correct answer is 53. Um, so that's the only one that makes sense. But we'll keep doing it. 5 times 15 was 75. 9 minus 5 is 4. Bring down the 5, 45. 15 goes into 45 three times, and I have 53, 53.0. Or answer 9C right there.
Okay, here are some more problems, additional arithmetic problems in everyday life. Which of the following is greatest? So we just might, might as well multiply these out. Three quarters, three times 25 is 75 cents. Eight dimes, eight times 10 is 80 cents. Um, 15 nickels is 75 cents. 15 nickels five, 15 times five, 79 pennies. So I could see 80 cents is the greatest amount or eight dimes is the largest amount. It's about getting all the units the same so you could compare numbers. Okay, we have two weeks, five days. So two weeks, five days, plus three weeks, four days. And what's that equal to? Five and four is nine, and two and three is five. Seven days to the week, so I'm gonna take seven out of here and put it in here to give me six weeks, two days. And my correct answer is six weeks, two days. Um, same thing here, kind of different units, so you have to combine them. We have two feet, four inches, uh, one foot, six inches. So just like you need another seven days in a week, you need another 12 inches to the foot. I can't go four minus six, so I have to borrow one foot here. So I'm gonna turn that into one feet. One foot is equivalent to 12 inches, so I'm gonna add 12 to this four to give me 16 inches. So this is 16 inches minus six inches, 10 inches. One minus one is zero. So my correct answer is 12B right here. Number 13, 36 students in a class, two thirds of them are females. How many males? I'm gonna highlight that because the natural guess is gonna be females. So I really only want not two-thirds, but I want the remaining one-third. So I do 36 times one-third, right? Two-thirds are females, and I want to know how many males are there. So one minus two-thirds gives me the one-third. And then the way I multiply fractions is I could reduce first. Three goes into here one time. Three goes into here 12 times. Multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom. Get 12 over one. Correct answer is A, 12 males. The next one down would be the number of females, 18. Um, that's a natural distractor. So you gotta read carefully and see that they want the number of males. Number 14, if a 200 mile trip takes four hours, so 200 miles in four hours, what is the average speed in miles per hour? So I want miles per hour, all my answers are miles per hour, I have miles per hour, so I just have to reduce this fraction. Four goes into four one time. Four goes into 250 times. So 50 over one is 50 miles per one hour, or my correct answer, 14C right here. Number 15, how many pounds are in 24 ounces? So I'm gonna take that 24 ounces and multiply it by a factor of one to get pounds. So there is 16 ounces in one pound, right? One pound and 16 ounces is the same. So I'm multiplying by a factor of one. Ounces are gonna cancel and then that's gonna give me pounds. LB stands for pounds. Then I can see eight goes into here twice. Eight goes into here three times and it gives me three pounds, um, three over two. Three over two is my answer or one and a half. So three over two improper fraction, two goes into three one time, with one left over giving one and a half. Sales tax of 8% on a purchase of $12. So I'm gonna multiply that out. I'm gonna have $12 times 8%. The way I remember these percents, I need to convert to a decimal. This is like an arrow shooting the decimal place over twice. So I go one, two. So 8% is the same thing as 0 0.08. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 8 plus 1 is 9, and then I have zero zeros. And then when I'm all done, I need to bring my answer over two places. This decimal is over 2, so this decimal goes over 1, 2. So my answer is 96 cents, or 0.96 of a dollar right there. Again, make sure you're doing these before I do them, and then check your answers against mine. Mark up the test as much as you can. A dozen oranges, so 12 oranges cost $1.35.
what is the cost per orange? So $1.35 divided by 12, or, or divided by 12 this way. There's no decimal places in that, so I just bring this one up. 12 goes in a 1, it doesn't. 12 goes in a 13 one time. 3 minus 2 is 1, bring down the 5. It's going to go in there one time. So it's approximately 11 cents. It's not exactly 11, but it's pretty close to 11. Number 18, a $75 fund is available for a party. If 75% of the available money is spent for food and beverages, how much is left over? So you could do that. You could find 75% of $75 and then subtract that amount from 75. Or you could just do 1 minus that 75% to get 25%. And then take that 25% times the 75. And remember, again, the decimals here are 25%. I go over 1, 2 to get 0.25. So I'm going to take $75 times 0.25. That's going to give me 25. Carry the 2. 35 plus 2, 37. Check my answers. They all end in 5, so i got to keep going. I've got a placeholder here. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 14 plus 1, 15. I add these together, 5, 7, 8, and 1. Then I count over my decimal places, 1, 2. So I count over 1, 2, and I get 1875. And there's my answer right there. Okay, number 19, an employee is paid at a rate of 674 per hour. That must be an old problem. Time and a half for overtime. Regular work week is 40 hours. During the past week, they work 44 hours. So first thing we got to do is figure out 40 hours times the 674. I'm actually going to put it up above here. 674 times 40. Zeros all the way across. Placeholder. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 1. 4 times 7 28. Plus 1, 29. Carry the 2, 4 times 6, 24, 25, 26. So I got 20, let me add over, 0, 6, 9, 6, 2. I got 1, 2 places over a decimal point, so I come over 1, 2. So the 40 hours earn 269.60, and that doesn't take into account overtime. So I can see that's answer A, that's the automatic distractor. Um, the overtime, we might be able to estimate it pretty quickly here, and I think that might be the quickest way to do it. So if this is 674 per hour, and you get time and a half, so that's one and a half, so 1 1.5 times 674. Well, if I just approximated that, I'd find half of 650, right? a little over three bucks. Three and six would be about 10. So this is about $10 for an additional four hours of work, right? So I'm getting about $10 an hour for overtime. I got 40 hours at the rate to get that amount. And then I got 10 bucks an hour times four or $40 more. So I have about, about $270 plus the $40 more for overtime. It's about 310. Is there anything even close to 310? This is almost exactly 310. I could have done all that multiplication, or I could just approximate it because it is multiple choice. Okay, number 20, it takes four men, 14 days. So I do four times 14, 40, plus 16, 56 man days. Right, men days. Right? So then, now I have seven men working at the same job, so seven men times how many days, I don't know what that is, I'm going to call it x, is going to equal 56. So to get that by itself, I divide both sides by 7, and I see x is equal to 56 divided by 7, or x is equal to 8. So it should take 8 days, which kind of makes sense, right? You don't have quite twice as many men. Um, so it should take about half as long, so eight days kind of makes sense. I guess I'll do two more, and then we'll wrap it up, and I'll do the second part in another video. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments, and I'll try and answer them as quick as I can. 
Number 21, if one quart of floor wax covers 400 square feet, so we have one quart is 400 square feet, how many gallons of wax are needed to do 6,400 square foot office? So we're going to go from 400 to 6,400. So I've got to figure out how many times 400 goes into 6,400. Or I could know as well that there are four quarts to the gallon, right? So four quarts to the gallon, this will be a quicker way to do the division. So if one quart does 400 square feet, that means four quarts are going to do four times as much. So if one does 400, four is going to do four times as much. So I'm going to do one times four to get four, 400 times four to get 1,600. And four quarts and one gallon are equal. So I'm going to replace that four quarts with one gallon. So one gallon does 1,600 square feet. Now I could do 1,600 square feet in the 6,400 square feet. 16 times two is 32. 32 times two is 64. So I could see this goes in there four times. It's just gonna take four gallons of wax to do this floor. Okay, number 22, another ratio problem. A pole 15 foot high casts a shadow five feet long. A six foot man standing nearby would cast how much of a shadow. So we know that 15 is to five as six is to what? We don't know what it is, so we'll just call it x. I could see 15 divided by five is three. Six divided by what is three? It's gonna be two. So the correct answer is two. Or another way to solve this too is cross multiply that number times that. 15 times x is equal to this times this, six times five, 30. Divide both sides by 15, and I could see x is equal to two, or the correct answer is two. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Again, you wanna have paper and pencil out when you do this, go slow, maybe repeat it a few times. If none of this makes sense to you, I have a Foundations of Math playlist, which is really a math course to bring you up to speed on all these skills. A lot of this is really fractions, ratio, proportion. Getting good at it is all about practice. So just keep practicing and you'll improve your scores. Thank you for watching.